I have made up my mind and um, I just want to quickly present you the definition of warm data as Nora Bateson puts it. And that is warm data can be defined as the transcontextual information about the interrelationships that integrate a complex system. So that's transcontextual information. That's something about interrelationships. Hey there. Something about in interrelationships. And that is uh, integrating, informing, putting together a complex system. So um, how, do we, how do we experience this? So what I thought about was that I define this room that we're in and all of you taking part in this situation as a complex system. So if we define this as a complex system, there, there is probably warm data in this system. And, um, and there's a lot of warm data in this system you can't even imagine. Um, and I would love to invite us all to share some of that information that integrates this uh, complex system. And um, my invitation to us all is to share a story. A story from your lifetime, from the lifetime of your parents or grandparents, something that's like um, special for you and um, uh, yeah, important for you and, and your story that made it possible that you are here right now. So, um, for example, mm, yeah, let's, let's say these stories should be, I would love them to be either very funny or very sad or very touching or very absurd, but something like that. So that let's, let's count, let's count the stories of the worm data that is in the room. So my story that I want to share is, um, I was, I think four years old or five years old, I could not swim. And we were in Barcelona, next to Barcelona in uh, Ampuria Brava. That's where we went um, every year for holiday with my parents. And um, they took us out of school because uh, in, during the holidays, um, during the school holidays, the family who owned the house was there. And we always visited a person called James, that was a friend of my father who had a yacht somewhere in the, in the canals of Ampuria Brava. And we sat next to the yacht and there were these, these slopes where you could drag boats out and in of the water. And I was playing there with my brother. And I happened to fall into this canal. I was four years old. And the only thing that I remember is that I was underwater. And then someone pulled me out of the water, which was the friend of my, my parents. And then, and then I just remember that I kind of shook myself off and we kept on playing. It was warm. I was in, in, in short clothes that dried quickly anyways. But if, if this guy hadn't been there and yeah, then I wouldn't be here. I could have drowned and nobody took that very seriously. It just happened like kids fall into the water. Yeah, well, but now I'm here. And that warm data that integrates this complex system that we're in. And now I would invite you to share one of the stories that, that make it possible that you are here. Whoever wants to go next, just unmute yourself and bring it on. And for those that just joined while the others are thinking, um, we just defined warm data, said warm data can be defined as the transcontextual information about the interrelationships within and making up a complex system. And um, we're sharing the warm data that brought us here in hilarious, touching uh, stories. I, I can offer a story. Um, 
I can think of millions of different stories. So there's so much warm data and I, I, I can't, I, I feel like with more thought I would find our one or the one, but the um, one that touches me uh, was my grandparents living in Glasgow on the west coast of Scotland. Um, they met when they were four years old uh, in the first year of primary school. Uh, so they've no, they knew each other and were friends and their lives were intermingled and patterning for years. Um, and then eventually when they were young adults, they started dating and they would meet each other um, after work on a bridge almost every evening. And I know that bridge and it has hugely fond memories for me. And they would then walk home, he would walk her home and then she would, they would sort of linger outside her house and then she would go in and he would go on his way to his house. And one evening um, she arrived on the bridge and he wasn't there. And she was really disappointed because, you know, there were no phones in these times, no ways to connect with each other. Um, and so she didn't know what had happened. Um, but so she walked home slightly heavy hearted, wondering what was wrong and if there was some meaning in this. And when she went into her house, she found him in her kitchen uh, with his, uh, as she called it, with his uh, feet under the table. Um, so he'd already found a way to be welcomed into her family home and she found him at the kitchen table. And I think for her at that moment, there was, that was a real defining moment. So I hold that very dearly. And that's one of the reasons that I'm here. That's a sweet story. Thank you. I, I don't really know why I'm here, but I'm happy to be here. Um, and when I describe warm data to people, I often use this example of the elephant in the room that everybody knows is there, but nobody sort of explores the elephant. And there's this, this famous saying about how do you, how you sense an elephant, how you see an elephant with different senses and you describe different animals. And then I've discovered, and that's both as well included in our US story, is that the more you start exploring the elephant, the more you see the giraffe on top of the elephant. <laughs> I can go next. So the way I got here, it's where I'm gonna um, tell is about when I was about five years old or so in Italy, um, maybe a bit older, eight years old. And I was having this incredible moment of discovering how cool it is to be an embodied being. I was doing a stretch and I remembered feeling, wow, this feels amazing. I am so happy to be in a body. And then going forward to uh, let's say teenage years, uh, my favorite course at school was biology because it explained all about, wow, how does life actually function? And I was really like confused, like what should I become? What do I do if what I'm interested in is life? Like what, what kind of a job do you do then later on? And, uh, and then when I after a biology study decided, wow, at university, this is all pretty depressing looking at how the world is doing with climate change and everything. I decided to like make my own way and go away from science for a while and see what other ways people were trying to heal their relationship to the environment a bit more. And uh, going forward, another couple of years I, I was living in Berlin then and I became aware of this great opportunity called the collaboration incubator where people were coming together to explore the commons and how we could like organize in decentralized ways and uh, there I met somebody called uh, Jakob and Jakob um, 
listened to me and my story and he said I think you should go to the warm data lab training with Nora Bateson and then I uh, went there last February and there I met Ka and this is why I'm here <laughs> thank you thank you for sharing I can share. So, hi, I'm Vienna, and um, my story of how I got here um, feels like it's connected to both my mom and myself. My mom being like, you know, she um, she was told by my grandmother to um, to not go to school back then, but she rebelled against that, and. Um, she supported herself all through um, school, uh, all the way to college, and um, and even sent money back to her village, um, where she was asked to um, basically work in a farm. Um, and on top of like supporting herself through college, and she also sent money back to her eight other siblings and her family. And so I'm currently in Malaysia, but um, I was fortunate enough that I, um, due to organizing civil movement here, um, that I ended up in Silicon Valley and um, also then worked on some like alternatives to blockchain um, startups, uh, which I've met like the meta currency, um, team, Matthew Shitty, who had uh, told me about warm data. And so that got me interested. And um, so I'm really, I, in fact, I just gave a talk a few days ago um, around the need for us to rethink uh, productivity and data. Um, so to insert like relational health, ecosystemic health um, in data. So mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you, Vienna. Yay. So I am missing a piece of data that probably many other people have. I actually don't know when I was born. I don't know exactly even where I was born. My story starts at a, in front of a doorstep in South Korea, Seoul, where I was found when I was a few days old. And from there on, I spent my first month with a foster family and was then, when I was three months old, adopted by a German mother and American father. And that really made it possible for, for all of my life story. And 30 years later, I actually went back and uh, was walking through the streets of Seoul with a volunteer who spoke broken English, but she, she could at least navigate. And we were ringing on different doors and just trying to see if anyone knows anything from back then in that area where I was found. And we actually did find a real estate guy that she kept on talking for half an hour all in Korea and I didn't really understand anything, but we left our phone number and we went to lunch. And after lunch, the guy called and said, the woman you're looking for is in my office right now, come over. And so we got in a taxi, we went over there and I actually, I met the woman who 30 years ago found me on the street and she, she really confirmed that story because there were some doubts in between. And yeah, that's, that's really the story of, I think, how, how my whole life turned out and uh, why, why I'm here. Welcome, Daniel. Yeah, that is a piece of worm data. These all are pieces of worm data. Who wants to go next? There are some people who have their camera off. I don't know whether you're there. Maybe you can switch on your camera if you're there and listening. We are in the warm data space here and we're um, bringing in the warm data that is integrating this complex system here being this room. and the transcontextual information that is making up this room in the 
in between and liminal space. Rainer, do you want to share something? Uh, yeah, sorry. whatever. I was I was just joining too, too late. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Can you just uh, maybe in one second explain warm data and then maybe I can contribute? Yes. Somehow? Warm data can be defined as the transcontextual information about the interrelationships that integrate or make up a complex system that come within the interrelationships that that uh, make the complex system the complex system. And we just discovered that this is a complex system, what we're in here, this room and space and time um, where we're talking about warm data. And we were bringing life stories in Marina. So stories that are hilarious, absurd, funny to tell, very sad um, or whatever out of so warm data out of our life that um that are part of the story why we are here right in this room right now so that's oh, what we're sharing very, very interesting then i would wait someone tells a story and i can pick up more <laughs> and maybe share mine or you can use you know sure I was just about to start, and as I was listening to all the other stories, I was wondering, oh, not that story, not that story, not story. <laughs> and now that I'm in the limelight, let me just begin with one of the story that just comes. And I would say I'm here because there is an ongoing critique at the, at the German education system. So I grew up in Germany, in Trier, a real post-war child, kind of still kind of my mind in the Cold War. and. The actual Second World War was very present with the generations that raised me. And uh, after having had the elite uh, a privilege of going to one of the better schools in Trier, um, I was seen as someone with big talent and could apply to alternative universities. This was in the early 1980s when there was such critique at the normal universities with many students, boring lectures, nobody was learning anything and uh, even people in companies said, oh, no, 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 this is not good enough. We need a better education because we don't have anyone taking responsibility in this country. If this sounds like today, it's yes, no wonder. <laughs> it hasn't changed much, unfortunately. And there were a number of universities growing up and I, I think I'm here because I got refused at the first one where I applied. It was like one that was really training people to be really good corporate managers and I came in, it was in the year 1984, 85, something around these times, and I think 1984 and I should prepare a lecture kind of like a little presentation and I felt like hmm what would be an interesting topic and I spoke about hmm is Germany forever divided maybe it will come together one day because what's happening there with Gorbachev and so on we might need to revisit the 1950s and people looked at me with big eyes as you saw the fear in them coming up oh my god I had touched this taboo thing and clearly I was not accepted <laughs> Like I, I looked like some guy of right wing or I don't know what, revisionist or whatever. So I went to another place that was also meant to be an education reform place. I was volunteering in a little school in the Pyrenees Mountains that was actually created by German immigrants in 1933. <laughs> and I found other Germans who kind of did a better choice than most other Germans in 1933. <laughs> or at least one that I found better when I came there and I met these old guys uh, just before they went and based on this background kind of in complete countryside very cool very calm I applied for another university the year after and there was taken it was just normal natural and so on and this is where people were really encouraging curiosity originality going for the innovation looking for the unexpected being open to anything and since then i'm addicted to it so that's why i'm here today was the other university wittenherdecke wittenherdecke yeah. yeah thank you for sharing reina any more stories i think we have time for one more More questions. Yeah, so there's 
there's loads of more stories. My mother was really, really, really cheeky to my father the first evening they met. They were, my father was with a group of people in a, in a music bar where they met. And um, the, uh, my mother was there to listen to the music and my father was there to have a funny evening with his friends and they were really loud and chatting away. And my mother wanted to listen to the music and she turned around and, and barked at them. They should go over to a very cheap restaurant name, put in very cheap restaurant name, the Wienerwald, and um, if they, if they want to talk. And that impressed my father so much that he pursued her from that day and then they married. So yeah, this is warm data. How do you measure it? Where do you sort that into? Which context does, do, do these stories belong to? Is that health? Is that education? Is that technology? Is that family? Is that what is it? Is it economy? It's it's all of that. It's within it's within within the liminal space that is um, the connective tissue that integrates our complex systems. And um, yeah, it cannot be neglected because if we neglect it, we come to where we're at, and that's not the best space to be at the moment. I mean, this room with you is great, and still we have some homework to do and that part of the part of the solution and for that homework lies in the warm data i feel like just briefly sharing that um experiencing warm data in the way that you've just offered it Ka, really really reminds me of this then cohen story of the farmer who like got his horse stolen and then somebody says oh god what how horrible <laughs> and then he says well i don't know <laughs> and then it turns out that actually in a different time scale or in a different frame it's not actually a bad thing right and i feel that one day to sort of or formats enable us to keep open to the possibility that what we're perceiving has a meaning that we can't quite grasp yet so thanks a lot. Hmm. Well, I, I, I sort of, in the noticing of, in the training for noticing what one day and that could possibly be B, I see a lot of getting insights and I find that fascinating um, because you start looking from different contexts and then different questions arise and with different questions, you're not necessarily go after an answer. But with a different question, you start looking from a different perspective at something that occurs out of the moment. And playing with that gave me a lot of ideas and impulses to approach challenges that I have on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, are there some more? more questions or remarks or what did you notice? What did you notice? Um, I can share that for me, I'm noticing myself feeling like, oh wow, all these different stories coming in in this liminal space. It feels a bit like timeless in a sense. It's like looks like my story connects with that person although it happens in a different era and like yet here we are right now connecting um yeah so this i feel it makes me want to try to practice this more in um um both in a group and on a one-to-one -one setting to see <laughs> how how things go so i'm really grateful for you you creating this space for, to make this happen like yeah. hard thank you thank you, you so much would you leave your mail car so that people can contact you when they want to I take part in a session mail. <laughs> yes so to um the people that are interested now in how this can work out or can be um brought into communities we're um, offering warm data sessions by design and um, from the International Bateson Institute, there is the request that these need to be held by um, well-trained and certified hosts, which we have one, two, three, four, five, five in the room. <laughs> 
And um, so if you're interested, just drop me a line and we can get together and see how we can apply that within your community of people. Thank you so much. And hereby, on time, I hand over to Samir. <laughs>